Hi, my name is Kyle and I have bladder cancer. Uh, this is the sixth video in a series of videos where I talk about my experience with cancer uh, and treatment. Um, in the last video, uh, I talked about my first round of chemo. Um, I recently finished chemo, uh, so in this video I'll summarize the entire experience. My chemo regimen was uh, dose-dense MVAC chemo. Uh, MVEC stands for uh, methotrexate, uh, vinblastine, adriamycin, cisplatin. Um, there is another chemo regimen that's uh, also used to treat uh, bladder cancer, and that's uh, gemcitabine cisplatin. Um, MVAC is uh, an older uh, regimen, uh, and it might be slightly more effective than uh, the gemcitabine cisplatin. Um, but they're both pretty close, really, in effectiveness. Um, from what I can tell. Um, MVAC is, uh, has more, generally more severe side effects. Um, classic MVAC is, uh, is administered uh, over a 28-day cycle, um, whereas um, what, what I had, dose-dense MVAC, uh, is given on, over a two-week cycle. Um, my dose-dense MVAC treatment was four cycles, uh, so, eight weeks. Uh, I finished my chemo regimen uh, about three weeks ago, and I, I kind of feel like all the symptoms uh, are behind me. So, uh, I'll summarize uh, kind of the whole experience now that I'm done with it. Um, the, I think the biggest side effect uh, throughout the, the, the entire treatment was just general fatigue and malaise. Um, uh, for me, this actually got better uh, as, I, as I went through more cycles. So the, the first cycle, I was, I was horribly fatigued. Um, but towards the end, like by the third and fourth cycles, it wasn't so bad. I don't know if I was getting used to it or just getting used to the feeling. Um, but I felt significantly worse in the first cycle than in the fourth cycle. Um, I think I would have felt better if I had been more active uh, during the course of chemo. I, I generally just kind of laid around the house and I worked about half time remotely. I didn't go to work. Um, so I just kind of laid around. I think if I had gone outside and, and walked around a little bit um, or tried to do more things that I probably would have felt better. Uh, but it's, it's winter time here and I, I I didn't want to go outside, it was too cold. Um, now one of the more uh, apparent side effects is my hair loss. Um, it's mostly confined in my head and uh, my groin. Uh, everywhere else I've, I've still got hair. Um, the, the hair loss started at about the second cycle uh, of chemo and um, just over the course of a couple days it got bad enough um, to where I started having to, to wear a head cover when I went to, to bed. Uh, because my pillow would just get hair all over it, and then I'd roll over and get hair in my mouth. Um, and it was, you know, it, it's su surprisingly to me, it caused me a lot of anxiety. I wasn't really, you know, I expected to lose my hair, and I wasn't really worried about losing my hair. Um, I kind of always wondered what I looked like bald anyway. Um, but when it started falling out, I got, I had a lot of anxiety issues. Um, I guess I guess because it was a constant occurrence, it was it was just every time I touched my head, I'd have a, a handful of hair, and every time I laid down, there'd be a pile of hair behind me. Um, so it was it was a constant reminder of of cancer, um, and it was the first symptom where you could look at me and tell that I had cancer. So it, it I guess it just made it more real. Um, so I had anxiety issues and. Uh, my friend actually picked up on that and convinced me to, to let him shave my hair um, or shave my head and I felt a lot better after that um, so it's, uh, it's been about three weeks since um, since I finished my last cycle um, and my hair was starting to grow back but it was it's, um, it's growing back slowly and uneven 
um, and thin. So I just shaved it again. Um, I'll just wait until it grows back uh, more even to, to let it grow out. I've kind of gotten used to being bald anyway. It's not really a big deal. Uh, I started getting ringing in my ears after the first cycle of chemo. Um, and it it got worse after the second cycle. Um, so I told the, the oncology nurse and she lowered my cisplatin dose by 25% uh, to avoid permanent damage. Um, and it didn't get any worse after that. Uh, so I, I had ringing in my ears throughout the, the duration uh, of the chemo. Um, and it's been about three weeks uh, since since I finished chemo, and it's it's starting to get a bit better. Um, I still have it, but it's not uh, it's not as pronounced uh, as it was during chemo. So I mentioned that I had uh, kind of a general anxiety um, when I started losing my hair. Um, I also had some acute panic attacks. Um, they seem to happen uh, when I was trying to fall asleep or just waking up. Um, the oncology nurse prescribed Ativan for me, um, and I, I took it a few times, but really just having the drug and knowing that I could take it um, was, was the biggest help for me. Now, I haven't heard too many people talk about this side effect. Um, but I had chronic hiccups. Um, the oncology nurse said that it was caused by the uh, dexamethasone. Uh, it's a steroid they give you to help the effectiveness of uh, anti-nausea drugs that they give you. Um, so I took that dexamethasone on the, uh, the day after uh, chemo and then uh, the day after the day after. So two days after chemo I was taking that drug twice a day. Um, and as soon as I started taking it, um, I'd get hiccups. And I had the hiccups all day, all night, uh, for three days after chemo. Um, you know, the, the cancer center staff said to, to tell them about all symptoms. And I, but I was reluctant to tell them about hiccups because, uh, you know, what can they do about hiccups? Nobody can cure hiccups. Um, but they can. Um, my wife got tired of me hiccuping all the time and, um, and finally called the nurse and uh, she prescribed me um, olanzapine uh, which, which stopped, stopped the hiccups immediately. Uh, it's, an, it's another, yet another, um, anti-nausea drug uh, and it, it really did the trick for, for hiccups. Uh, I had a really crappy appetite all the way through chemo. Um, there were there were really very few things that um, I had any desire to eat. Um, so I'm three weeks out from from chemo now, and my appetite's just just starting to come back. Um, I can eat a full meal now, and I actually want to eat a lot more than I did before. Um, I lost about 12 percent of my body weight. Uh, I went in weighing about 175, and I. Uh, today weigh about 155. Uh, so, you know, not eating for, for eight weeks definitely shows. So speaking of eating, um, you gotta be really careful what you eat during chemo. Um, my, my second chemo day was a pretty long one. Uh, I was at the cancer center for I don't know, maybe um, well, all day, at least six hours, uh, maybe eight. Um, so it was over lunch, uh, so my wife would go out and get lunch and bring it back. Um, every lunch meal that I ate uh, while receiving chemo, I'm not sure I'll ever eat again um, because I've got a lot of mental association. Um, like some of the lunches I had were really good. Um, but even just thinking about them now makes me, makes me feel sick. Uh, so be careful what you eat. Don't eat any of your favorite foods.
uh, around the second cycle, uh, I I started having um, pretty bad acid reflux uh, and heartburn. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, I started getting uh, stomach pain. Uh, I'd, I'd eat a meal and then about an hour later, uh, my belly, belly would really hurt and I'd have to uh, just lay down and sleep it off um, for, for several hours. So uh, that pretty much put me out of commission because I was just sleeping all day. Um, and I really didn't want to eat because it, it hurt. Uh, but and also, if I didn't eat for a long time, it it hurt about the same. Um, so I told the nurse about it, and she said I probably had an ulcer, a stomach ulcer. Um, and she prescribed me uh, Protonix. Um, and that helped immediately. Uh, so I've, I'm supposed to take it for, for two months. Um, and from the beginning of taking it, I've, I felt a lot better. Um, and I've been able to eat stuff that I couldn't eat before. Uh, pizza and chili and stuff like that doesn't, doesn't bother me anymore. I try not to do it too much. Because uh, I know I still have a problem. Uh, but I feel a lot better once I, once I went on that drug. Uh, I expected to have a lot of trouble with mouth sores. Um, but I really didn't. Um, around the third cycle, I got one uh, on the side of my mouth. Um, but it, it didn't hurt that much, and it really didn't affect uh, what I ate and, and being able to eat. Uh, so mouth sores really weren't that big of a deal for me. And I'm, that surprises me because um, even before chemo, I, I would get uh, mouth sores pretty frequently. Um, so I expected to have problems, but I, I really didn't. Um, so the one sore I had wasn't that painful, uh, and uh, it's gone now. So those are all the symptoms that I can remember having. Um, it really, it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, um, especially since I know MVAC is supposed to have. Uh, more pronounced side effects than, than other treatments. Um, so my oncologist said that, uh, now that I'm done, my oncologist said that um, it takes about two to three weeks for the immune system to, to beef back up uh, and get uh, back to normal. And uh, about four to six weeks for, for most people to, to feel normal in general. Um, I'm three weeks out from my, from my last cycle, and uh, I feel pretty good. Um, aside from my hair, uh, I, don't, I don't know of any other symptoms that, that persist. Um, so uh, I consider myself pretty fortunate, because I, I think I dealt with it pretty well. Um, it might be because I'm young, uh, certainly a lot younger than most bladder cancer patients, uh, but chemo really wasn't that big of a deal for me.